In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I do my edge painting process. When I started edge painting, I found that there were very few people really talking about how to do this, and so it was really kind of a challenge to learn, but I hope this video will make it a little easier for you if you are hoping to do a little edge painting on your own. I've also written an article about it, which I will link down in the description, that talks about where I purchased all the equipment, what type of equipment I bought, and it also has a printed example of how to do edge painting. The key to getting really good edges in your edge painting is making sure that your stack is perfectly cut. In this case, I had to use two different cutters, so my stack isn't perfect. The workaround is simply to line up two edges first, spray those edges, rotate, realign the edges, and then do the other side. So in this case, I'm going to fast forward a little bit because it takes me a while to get the stack perfectly flat on the two edges. In this case, the cotton paper really kind of wants to stick to itself, so it becomes kind of difficult to get it to lay flat. There are two things you should notice during this step. The first is that I have pre-cut boards, which really help when you're clamping down your stack. If you don't clamp them between something tight, one, you'll dent the paper, and two, you won't have a really tight enough seal. If you ha don't have a nice tight clamp on this, what's going to happen is you're going to have color leaking in between your prints. I also make sure to put a scrap piece on the top and the bottom of the stack to prevent any extra overspray. These boards are just a cheap piece of masonite that I got at the Home Depot and cut down on a table saw. You may also notice that I use a secondary board to sort of knock the pieces into place. Sometimes this kind of helps get those last few to be flush with the rest. Sometimes you have to go individually and sort of fan the sheets to get them to sort of spread out and get a little air between them so that they can actually lay flat on the edge. Once my stack is between the boards and flush against the table, I get my clamps. These are some cheap clamps that I got at the Home Depot as well. They're really easy to screw down. Personally, I like to have three clamps in most cases. Two was fine for this, but any stack larger than this, I would want to have three. It's best if you can keep the pressure closer to the edges you will be painting. If your clamps are too far away from the edge you're painting, sometimes a little bit of a paint can sort of seep in between. You need it to be really tightly clamped. Once I have them screwed down relatively tight, I'll prop them up. These clamps are really nice because they actually lift the stack up a little bit, which means I get a more even spray around all of the edges. Um, I'll adjust them a little bit and I get them down really tight. You really almost can't get these too tight. You want to make sure that you have no gaps in between your paper for the ink to seep through. Now that we have two edges ready for painting, it's time to set up the airbrush and actually mix our pigment. So in this case, I just have a relatively cheap airbrush. Uh, you can get these at hobby stores or order them on Amazon. If you check out my link, you'll see the different items I purchased and kind of where you can get them. I think the key is having a compressor that at least has an air tank. This means you'll get a much more even flow and you'll have a lot less spatter. I know this next step is a little hard to see because I sort of blocked the camera without realizing it. But mixing the ink is really actually very easy. In this case, I'm using a blend of Createx Airbrush Medium, some cheap acrylic paint from Michaels, and a little bit of Flow Aid, which you can also buy at Michaels in the paint department. I found that there's also a cheap alternative in that cheap, you know, craft paint aisle. It's, um, I believe, Dry Extender. This sort of helps keep the paint from clogging the nozzle and gets it to the right consistency. When you mix your airbrush paint, you want it to be the consistency of milk. So it needs to have a little bit of flow so it doesn't clog the nozzle. You can use a variety of different inks. In fact, many people use oil-based, water-based, or watercolors. In this case, it's just cheap acrylic paint. But the mixture will come out to be about 50% acrylic paint, 50% airbrush medium. Now comes the mixing. So shake up your bottles thoroughly. It helps get everything nicely distributed. I find if you buy actual airbrush paints, they tend to settle, so you really need to shake them up. In this case, this is just a clear extender base. This helps get it to the right consistency if you're using a slightly thicker paint.
Here you can see me add the Liquitex Flow Aid. You only need one or two drops of this. You don't really need a lot. If you find you need to thin out the pigment a little bit more, just add a little bit of water. You want to mix your pigment really well. In this case, I've mixed up a lot of pigment. This is probably enough to maybe do two, a stack of 200 cards. Typically, I won't spray the entire stack at once just in case there's any kind of issues. I don't want to ruin the whole stack. Likewise, it's much easier to spray a small stack because you don't have to use as much paint and you have a lot less risk of it bleeding through the cards and getting oversaturated. Here once again I'm comparing the client swatch with my mixed pigment. Even though I've diluted the paint with 50% airbrush medium, it keeps a lot of saturation. So it really has a good match to the swatch. Once I had a good color match, I felt that the paint was a little bit thick. So I went and grabbed my bottle of water and added just a few drops of water to the mix. Once you're satisfied with the consistency of your paint, all you need to do is fill up your airbrush. Some airbrushes have a siphon feed from the bottom, mine has a gravity cup at the top. I don't like to fill it all the way, simply because it sometimes bubbles out around the edges when you close it up. I always keep a piece of cardboard nearby to get my airbrush started. Sometimes when you first start it, the nozzle will spatter a little bit, and you don't want that to happen on your cards if you can avoid it. Once I'm satisfied with the flow, I begin painting. Keep your distance. Don't get too close because you'll oversaturate the cards and you risk it bleeding. I'm going to speed up this next stage, but the key is really not to get too close to the stack because you don't want to oversaturate it. Likewise, work in light, quick coats that are moving back and forth. If you're keeping your airbrush too still, you're probably going to saturate it with too much paint. Now before I unclamp the stack so that I can line up the other side, I want to make sure that my color coverage is good. Many times the airbrush paint is a little bit transparent, so you want to get good coverage by building up your pigments. So I simply compared it to my printed invitation to make sure that it matches both the swatch and the print. In most cases the acrylic paint dries really quickly. If you just wait a moment or two, it'll be dry enough that you can fan the sheets. It's important that once you've finished one side before you restack to the next side that you fan the sheet so that you make sure that the plastic qualities of the paint have it sealed it up on that edge. You want to make sure that they don't tear later once the paint is 100% dry. Now all that's left to do is fan the sheets and restack them on the other side so that you can spray the other edges. 
I didn't want the video to be too long, so I actually didn't record me doing the other side. However, I can assure you it works exactly the same way. Hopefully that was helpful in giving you an idea of how to do edge painting yourself. If you have other questions, check out my written tutorial in the links below.